Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. So today's clip's going to be a little bit different than the clips I normally do because it's not about a drone. Um, nothing on this table flies and I thought what I would try to do is expand the scope of the channel just a little bit because I spend so much time around technology and I'm such a geek that I'm involved with a lot of new technology and I thought wouldn't it be cool if I did a couple of clips on some of the stuff I play with on a regular basis? Now, if you guys don't like these clips or don't want me to stray from the drone theme that we've got on the channel, you know, I won't do that. So it's really up to you how this thing goes. So please leave me comments below if you want me to do more of these clips or not do these clips, that's fine too. But I thought today I'd give it a shot and see if you guys like these. Because again, being a nerd, I have a lot of tech I play with. And I love telling my friends about it. And I think you guys as friends, so I thought I'd tell you about it. So the first thing I want to talk about is a Cree flashlight. Now a lot of you may know what the Cree flashlight is, a lot of you probably don't know what it is, but I thought I'd explain what it is, where it came from, and why it's different than standard flashlights that are out today. So let me back up a little bit. So from the beginning of time, for me as a kid, I've always had a flashlight. And all of us started with a bulb and a battery. And they were really simple, and the batteries lasted quite a long time, but they were fragile. But they were simple to use. So the incandescent bulbs that were in those flashlights were not terribly efficient, so you didn't get as much use out of the batteries as you probably could have if the light was more efficient, but they worked. So we had flashlights, we'd go out in the woods and enjoy the evening. That changed about 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when commercial production of LED lights came out. Now, LEDs in the early stages were expensive, and they were not real bright, they weren't real efficient, and they're kind of bluish in color. So the flashlight worked, but it threw kind of a weird beam that changed the color of everything. But they were durable as heck, and they were way more efficient than incandescent light. So the first LEDs came out, again, expensive, but they worked really well. So I got an LED flashlight. I loved it. Then they went to multiple LED flashlights. And eventually, I think they went to two, then to four. I think the last one I had had eight LEDs in it, and it was really, really bright. I mean, it threw a good beam, and it had the ability to sort of illuminate an area pretty well. Batteries lasted quite a long time, so I was pretty much happy with that. and had a bunch of them all over the house. About two years ago, this Cree product came on the market space. Now, what's different about the Cree, it is an LED flashlight, but the LED is a different style of LED. It was invented by this company called Cree. Now, where it came from was back in 1987, they started the company based on a new technique that they developed for doping an LED. So an LED, a light-emitting diode, is basically a diode that will emit light when current is passed across that junction. And that it's called a doping agent. That doping agent that prevents those two junctions from touching is typically a, a material that's easy to produce and very inexpensive. The problem with that was it wasn't real efficient, and it was easy to make and cheap to make, but it could be better. So what Cree came up with was a whole new process using a different material called silicon carbide. Now silicon carbide was the first material ever used back in the early days of, at the invention of LED, back in the early 1900s, late 1800s, when the LED was first invented or first discovered, they used silicon carbide. The problem with silicon carbide is that it's extremely difficult to culture, so it's hard to grow crystals based on that material. What Cree did, or the company Cree did, was figure out a way to synthesize that material to make it mass producible and really inexpensive. So it all started at uh, North Carolina State University, and this company was founded in Durham, North Carolina. But five students and a couple of other people from the college actually went through the investigation and the development of finding this way to, to create this silicon carbide growth, if you will, or synthesize it, and they patented that technology and founded this company, Cree. So these bulbs now, the Cree bulbs, the Cree doesn't make flashlights, but Cree makes the bulbs that go into flashlights or the LED elements that go into flashlights. They're in tons and tons of material. So not only are they in flashlights, but they're in home lighting. You can buy Cree lights for your home. If you go to Home Depot, they've got them there where you can replace your incandescence or your fluorescence with them. But I'm real interested in the flashlights because the amount of light that one Cree element can produce is astounding. It's absolutely astounding. So if you've seen these Cree flashlights set next to an LED, they will blow your socks off as far as how much light they can produce. The best part is they're incredibly durable. 100,000 hours of use, I think, on the Cree light before it's got to be fail before it fails or before it's got to be replaced. They're they're durable for kind of abuse. You can drop them. These lights are water resistant. You can get them wet. You can't put them in a pond or anything, but you can if you drop them in a stream, you can take them out, dry them off. They're going to work just fine. They're great in the rain, but they'll last a long time and the bulb is extra, extremely durable. And what sets the, the models we're selling apart from a lot of the models on the market, and there's a ton of people making Cree based flashlights, are two things. The quality of the Cree bulb and the quality of the lens. Because the two things that really make this special um, is there's 
there are a lot of different styles of Cree bulbs. We use the T6 Cree bulbs, which are the best you can get. They're the brightest you can get, and they're durable as heck, and they come right from Cree, so they're an authorized product. But the lenses as well, there are inferior lenses out there that don't do a good job of focusing that beam. And that's super critical because as much light as that Cree element is producing, if the lens doesn't focus that correctly, you're going to have a lot of scatter of the beam. It's going to waste a lot of that brightness. So having the right lens in the front actually focuses it either on a wide beam when you're walking on a path or pulling it into a very narrow beam downfield with very little stray radiation out the sides of light. So that gives you a really crisp downfield image. And the way you decide between those two, right now it's in its retracted position, and that gives you a nice, in the retracted position, you can see it on the screen, a nice wide beam. So if I leave it closed like that, I can walk along a path or I can light up the backyard, and it does a great job with that. The more I want to focus the beam, I pull out on the lens. You can see the lens extending there. And the lens in its fully out position will focus that wide beam with the same intensity down to an extremely narrow square beam. And you can throw that downfield hundreds of yards at a focal point. So it means if I'm in the woods and I'm walking around with a path but I have to find something or something makes a noise in the tree, I can actually pull out the edge like that, I can pull the end of it out, and I can focus up in that tree and zero right in on what it is up in that tree. The other nice thing about them is that they're, this one is a multifunction light. What that means is you push this once to turn it on, and then if you tap it again, it'll walk through the five different functions the light can perform. So it's got a, a dim, brighter, brightest as far as the light goes, and then there are two strobe modes. If you hit it again, it'll go into strobe mode where it just flashes, and that's really good if you're broken down on the side of the road. You can put it in strobe mode, put it on your dashboard. There's no way a car is going to miss you coming through because it sees that strobe light. The second strobe mode will actually simulate an SOS. So if you're out on a boat or you're out someplace where you need help, I usually extend the beam all the way out. I'll put it in SOS mode, and that'll throw that beam, i got to believe it's a mile or more across open water. So if there's another boat anywhere in the vicinity, they're going to see that strobing SOS, and they're going to know immediately that you need help. So a really cool product. The difference between these two guys are a couple things. This is a 2,000 lumen, which is very, very bright. This is a 3,000 lumen. This little pocket guy is absolutely astounding and I keep these guys with me all the time. I keep them in my car, I have one in my bed stand, we got one in the kitchen, I've got one in my drone kit. So I like it a lot because it's really really tiny but the amount of light this thing throws is mind-blowing. In addition to which it runs on a standard battery so this is a AA battery that powers this one. It's got a nice little clip on there, a little pocket clip and again being a nerd we love our pocket clips. It's good for clipping on your belt, clipping on your pack. Where I use it a lot is if I'm out in the woods and I've got a hat on or I'm anywhere with a hat on, I can clip it on the brim of the hat, on the top of the brim of the hat, turn it on and throw a lot of light in front of me and still have my hands free to do what I have to do. So extremely versatile light. The 3000 lumen is a little bit more sophisticated because you've got a couple of different battery options with it. So if you pull the back of this off, Inside you'll see there's a battery and a battery sleeve. The battery sleeve is just there to take up the extra space inside the flashlight because the battery's small you can hear it rattling around in there. So you basically throw the battery sleeve in, throw the battery and you're good to go. This battery is a specialized rechargeable. It's a, a high density rechargeable battery. It's used with all the Cree flashlights. It's a 18650 I think or 16850. That's it. 16850. And that's rechargeable. Now the kit we sell, and you can buy these anywhere, but we sell them on our website, is the kit includes the battery sleeve, the battery, the flashlight, a wall charger which will charge this battery and it also includes this battery eliminator and that's why I said you had a couple options for batteries. So this is the one I normally use and this will go a couple hours if you're using the flashlight but if you forget to charge that or maybe it's charging and you need to use the flashlight this battery eliminator allows you to take AAA batteries, three of them, and put them inside there slide this down inside the flashlight, close it up and then use that. Now I will caution you that between these two this guy will probably last twice as long, maybe even almost three times as long as this guy, um, and it, because it draws quite a bit of current to generate that type of light. So I use this one all the time, but I usually keep this sort of set aside in case I need it, and then I can grab that, throw it in there, and use the light. Um, I think that's all I really wanted to talk about with this. That there is one more thing that I will tell you about, and I'm, I don't want to make too big a deal out of this, but it's kind of a cool feature, but it's a little depressing to talk about. And it's the front of the lenses. You'll notice that the hoods, I don't know if you can see that, but the hoods extend past the glass, and that's to protect the lens. You don't want to get it scratched because if the lens gets scratched, then the beam will scatter a little bit. So you want to keep that clean and unscratched. But if you look closely at the edge of those, and again, I don't know if you can see it there. I'll do a close-up up here. They're not flat. They're actually etched. So there's, there's ridges and there's valleys on there. And the reason they do that is because, a couple of reasons. Number one, if this is in your car, and I hope this never happens, but if you're ever in an accident where your doors won't open, 
and you got to get out of the car, this is a wonderful way to break a window. So you can pound on a window with this, and because of this, this ripple effect on the front, it'll break that glass. So it'll get you out of the car. And both of these actually have that on there. You'd have to bang pretty hard, I think, to break the glass with that one. But they're both there. The other way these are advertised, and I've never seen it used as such, but I guess you could, is they're great defensive flashlights, right? So if you've got, say you're out, you know, and somebody's coming at you or something, I guess if you have the presence of mind to hold this, there's a lot of weight here. And that front has got that ripple effect in it. So it's it, pretty good for fending off attackers. And that's kind of how they advertise it. But anyway, that's built in as just one of the features. So those are the two Crees that I like. Um, we also sell a headset that has three Crees in it. So you can actually put it on your head and turn it on and go hunting or do whatever you do with a headset on, do work around the house. Um, but the Cree bulb itself is at the heart of all of these. And for my money, uh, you cannot find, find a better product than this on the market today as far as flashlights go. And I know the holidays are coming up, so if you're looking for a quick gift to throw in a stocking or something, these are probably good ideas for friends of the family, daughters, cousins, uncles, girlfriends, whatever you decide to do with that. But uh, I like them a lot. So anyway, that's kind of where the Cree came from and what it's all about. Again, this is the first time I'm going to do a clip that's non-drone related, so please give me some feedback below. If you want to see more of these topics covered, I'm more than happy to do them. Um, we really appreciate the viewership. You guys have been really loyal to us, and the comments have been wonderful. Uh, the subscription numbers are going up daily, so it looks like you're sharing these clips with your friends, and we really appreciate that. Um, so if you're enjoying this, like I always say, we'll make more of them. So thanks again for watching, and have a great afternoon.